Welcome to Two Travel Dads Podcast. Here we share our favorite destinations, travel tips, ideas for saving money, and stories from our adventures. Be sure to check out our show notes at twotraveldads.com slash podcast dash episodes. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Two Travel Dads Podcast. I'm Rob. I'm Chris. And um, today we are talking about something awesome and hilarious. Um, we're doing this today specifically because we just left. Um, we're talking about uh, <laughs> Korean spa experiences. Yeah. Um, so it's something that I chose to do for Bob for his birthday because he heard about it through a friend um, who really raved about the amethyst room, or I guess also known as the jewel room. Yeah. And so Bob really wanted to go check it out. But, so that alone is the reason that we went. And then yeah, now we've had a complete experience. Well, they have a jewel room, so which we'll, is we'll get to, we'll get okay. to all that. All right, but yeah, so <laughs> we are going to tell you all about our complete experience at the Korean spa from start to finish. Um, but before we dig into that, um, let's kind of talk about some other spa type things that we have gotten to do because I I think, feel like we get to visit spas randomly, and everyone is very different. And I was trying to think about what it is that I like about each one that we've gotten to go to. Um, and I think I, I like that they're so quiet. <laughs> they are really quiet. I think it's uh, it's nice that people respect your desire to relax and um, find your inner zen. Yes. <laughs> so that's one of the things that we love to find is spa is a nice quiet space, a relaxation room sort of thing. Um also, we have to remember we're like around kids all the time. Yeah. So when we actually get a break to do a spa day, it's really special. We you actually have to tell somebody to be quiet. I know. Yeah. We actually got to do a really wonderful one um, in Big Sky, Montana this summer. And a friend watched the kids so that we could go and do it. And it was fantastic. <laughs> that was nice. That wasn't so much of a spa experience as, as much of a just go and get a massage experience. That's right? true. Yeah. yeah. So I guess. Oh, so there. I guess that you just. Great segue into what we're talking about. So there's a spa experience and then there's a massage experience. Massage is awesome. You can, you know, get one anywhere, you know. Um, but doing the spa experience, um, we are um, talking more about, like, the hot tubs, the pools, the different sort Steam of... Steam rooms, the saunas. Yeah, all the different treatments and interesting health things that you can do at a spa. So, yeah. Um, so we've got soaking and spa pools. Um, you like to do the weird um, hot, cold sort of thing. Yeah, the, um, I, I, you know, I mean, there's lots of information about it, but um, yeah, there, you know, you can go from a really hot, hot tub to a warmer pool and then down to a cold pool um, and, uh, and alternate between them. So, um, you know, I think it's great that there's something there for everybody, but I do enjoy doing that. I will say there was this one place that we went to that was in Bingen, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, that's down in the Columbia Gorge on, on the Washington say, side of the river. Yeah. Um, and they have a really great pool, but they also, and they have a nice, uh, infrared sauna room and, uh, and out, out, outdoor hot tub. Um, but inside they have a really cold, cool pool, but it's <laughs> freezing cold. Like it is the temperature of the sound. Like I want to say like 32 degrees it, or it's something. Too it's too cold. It's too cold. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, but I think you're going to find a different experience each place that you go yeah. to. So, I mean, that's something that we always try to do is each thing that is available when we get to do a spa sort of thing. Um, and, you know, what, what he was just talking about was actually not even a spa. It was just at the hotel, which was cool. So health all around. Um, so there's that aspect. And then there is, of course, the massage aspect. So we've gotten to do um, hot stone. When we were in Hawaii, we did um, Lomi Lomi. I had it. Or did you have that? Or just me? It was the Lomi no. Lomi with the sticks where they roll the sticks across your body. Maybe. I think I... Well, it wasn't I'm, memorable I'm not for sure. You, well, I, I didn't watch them do it. So if they use sticks, I don't know. Maybe I thought it was their forearm. I never know actually what they're doing. Um, and, and I think we've talked about this before. It'd be really great to like have it videotaped only so you could know like, okay, so how are they doing this really amazing thing? So I could replicate it at home. Yeah. Right. But you don't, you're just like imagining it as it's happening. You're like, how are they doing that? Yeah. Gosh, I'm thinking back to this, this one massage that 
got to have a long time ago where somehow my arm did yoga independently of my mind and the massage therapist had my arm up bent and twisted back behind my head so that she could dig under my scapula Hmm. which was amazing anyways um so that's another awesome thing is the spas offer all kinds of different treatments like that and then like facials and stuff too if you want to get into like the beauty side of things but yeah well i I think it's just it's all about self-care right and i think what's different about spas is that you have all those different treatments that you mentioned right so whether or not you want to do a body scrub a facial a body wrap massage in addition to all those services that provide you don't even have to get one of those you can go and check into the spa and enjoy the pools and then enjoy the the rooms that are available um, all without actually doing a treatment. So I think that's what's really kind of cool about and, the spa. Yeah, and that's what brought us to the Korean spa was all the stuff besides the treatment type of things. But um, so the reason that we want to share it is because it was um, it was a very interesting experience from start to finish. You know, doing this Korean spa. It was our first time doing that <laughs> for either one of us. Um, and be- before we even went, we were advised to just roll with it, open mind. Yeah. Yeah, uh, our friend who recommended, she said, just keep an open mind and just go with what they tell you to do and you'll have an experience. <laughs> so that was not a lot of info and we did I didn't research ahead of time. So um, now we're going to take you through what actually happened. Um, and yeah, it was very um, intimate. Well... No, not really. It wasn't it was, intimate. Uh, no, it was. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, it was. It's. Uh, you know, you're you're around lots of people. So you, when you first get to at least this spa, and I'm sure like many others, you check in at the counter and at this Korean spa, um, you know, uh, no shoes, right? So right out front, there's a locker. Um, so you get a little key, right, that you'll take with you, wrap around your wrist. Um, and you put your shoes right in the first initial locker before you enter in the they call it the wet room area. And this is the space where it is um, divided, right? So you've got your men's space and then you have your women's space. And in these spaces, it's where it's, um, there no clothes, right? So completely nude. You're not supposed to wear shorts in these areas, right? So you've got your towels and things, but this is where you go to use the different pools that are there. And that's why they call it the wet room. So there's the different pools, which is like, at least in this space, um, the hot, warm and cool pools. And in addition to those, they have the steam room and the sauna. So you can go between all of these different spaces and enjoy that area. And there it's, it's, it's no clothes. So. Yeah. So if you're not used to that, it, it first feels very awkward to literally just like walk out of the locker room, just yeah. butt naked. I think for most Americans, it's probably like that versus other countries yeah. where, you know, these, these types of environments are common. Yeah. So, I mean, personally for me, for the first few minutes, I had to um, just ignore everything around me and just make myself comfortable. Yes, yeah. you just have to go. It was really awkward for me. It, it's <laughs> super awkward. It's weird. You um, you you kind of get a crink in your neck from keeping your eyes like up at the ceiling because you know you feel like you can't make eye contact and you know they you, have TVs throughout the rest of the place. I think inside of there would be there a great place for a TV. That would have been great to have a TV in there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but but still though, I mean, people keep to themselves. It's not. Um, but then there were also a bunch of people who were just like chatting. Yeah. Just like regular I for, conversation. I think for other people and in other cultures, um, it's a, it's a social experience too. Um, you know, it's well, not a social experience for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but there, um, you know, you can, after you're done experiencing that portion of the spa, um, that's when it gets to be co-ed. So they give you a nice little outfit for you to wear. Um, so you put on your shirt and these little shorts, and then you can go down to the co-ed space, and that's where the different rooms are that uh, Baba talked and about. And personally, before. that was much more relaxing for me than the than the wet room experiences. But yeah, but um, yeah. So that's that's the whole wet room area, and, and it had that multi-temperature, um, different pools like Chris was talking about. You know, go from hot to cool to cold. Um, so there's that, but. The and thing we experienced that too at Soak on the Sound, right? In, in Did we do uh, Port that Townsend, there? they had. Um, was I don't there a remember. Cold pool? I don't remember a cold pool, but they had like. A, I remember there was the hot copper saline pools. Yeah, and then there was like the like sauna. In the sauna, but but and that was. 
different in which it was, it, I think it was like shorts optional. So yeah. unlike where we were at just- And that was, that was mixed clothing yeah, optional. That was mixed. Yep. Exactly. Well, that was also awkward. It was, but what's really great if, is if, you can if you're not used your to nudity, room. it's just yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. You can reserve your own room. Okay, but um, moving back along with our experience today, um, after we had our soak time, we had to be in the pools for at least a half an hour because Chris booked us um, body scrubs. So, what did you expect the body scrub was going to actually be like or include? Well, I thought the body scrub um, would be in a room and um, have some type of, uh, I don't like paste <laughs> or, you know, some type of some nice skin cleansing, like cream or paste, something that had some exfoliating, you know, exfoliation with it, but it wasn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was actually in the same area in that same wet room that we talked about and- uh, Open to the rest of the Open to everybody room. else. Yeah. And you're actually completely naked doing this. Um, and there's this other guy who just wears these exfoliating gloves and he just like scrubs you down. I don't even know what the gloves were made out of. Maybe they had I just pumice closed my stones. Eyes. I, I, I don't know. I had to close my eyes too because it was, so I've had nine tattoos and only one of them was more exhilarating and or had moments of pain more than my body scrub did. I've had zero tattoos, but <laughs> however, I don't think that the body scrub was painful in any way. Oh, it was painful for me. But I also like loofahs and and yeah, like I don't. and and those types of things. Um, you know, when when I bathe or shower. Um, but what was interesting is that um, in addition to the, the scrubbing, the aggressive um, aggressive aggressive scrubbing. <laughs> scrubbing, right? And you're just completely naked on like a massage table that has. Um, I, I don't know what it's like. Vinyl. I'm just, vinyl. I was going to say a tarp thrown over it, but it's not <laughs> quite a tarp. But it is waterproof so that um, they can, after they're scrubbing for a little bit, just like dump a bucket of hot water on you mm-hmm. to, to rinse off the dead skin cells. And if you have your but, eyes closed, you're not quite prepared for it. And all of a sudden, oh, yeah. you just it, you're, there's just this <laughs> deluge, deluge over your body that is extremely sensitive. <laughs> yeah, keep your eyes closed. But um, but that part actually felt good to me, like actually getting rinsed off without hot water um, felt really good. So while it was an awkward experience, um, you know, just being naked on a table in the same area that other people are using these pools and walking by you, um, getting scrubbed by a rando person, um, <laughs> I did. I, I think my skin feels great. Yeah. My, OK, my skin does feel great. But yeah. Anyway, so. So it starts off and you're on your back and you're getting scrubbed aggressively everywhere. And like he scrubbed in my beard, which felt weird. And it felt like a cat was trying to clean my beard really aggressively. And there was the water and stuff. And then you flip over and then they do. Same thing. Yeah, do the backside. And I felt that it got a little invasive in terms of my butt crack. Well, but our friend <laughs> told us like they're going to get in all the places. And they get in all the places. So moving on from there, they do the same thing where they dump hot water all over your backside. And then there's, of course, a hole in the table for your face to go through. Um, Like um, a standard massage table. Yeah. Um, I don't know how your face was sitting, but mine wasn't sitting quite right. And when that happened, I had water go up like towards my mouth and my nose and it startled me and... It was just, it added to my experience. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I I figured what was happening and I managed myself appropriately. Okay, well. Did not happen. Congratulations. But then from there, right? So with that body scrub experience, which was not what we had thought, um, and... Uh, and then you, they end it by like kind of putting some sort of something else on you. Well, then they kind of wash you with a loofah with some type of liquid, I don't know what. Um, but um, And then they give you like a little massage at the same time. Um, and oh, and they end by hitting you. And well, it's more of like uh, <laughs> cupping, clapping. Like if you were to cup your hands and then kind of smack your body, yeah, it's like it's like that. Um, but uh, but and it just kind of wakes you up a little bit. Um, but anyways, from there, then you go rinse off and then you get ready for your massage. Yeah, yeah. And like I jumped back in the pools because I was like, I don't, I don't know what to do right now. My body's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> But then, yeah, so going back down um, or putting clothes on (laughs) and then going down to the mixed co-ed area, that's where I finally started to, like, relax and feel spa-ish. So, yeah, um, Korean massage is awesome. Um, 
it's a fun experience. It is, um, it was not as aggressive and um, startling as my Chinese massage experience in um, China. Um, but it was still, it was, it was very different from your standard therapeutic massage. Um, I don't know if, have you ever seen like somebody actually do that? Like seen a video of somebody doing what happened to us today? Like with the no, I've not watched a video. I mean, I've I had this Korean massage today, which was completely different and picture, than what you'll get from a standard. I know what I'm thinking. In Charlie's Angels, the movie with Drew Barrymore and Cameron Diaz and Lucy Liu, it's going like way back. I know there is a scene where they where Lucy Liu is playing a massage therapist, and she runs and jumps on Tim Curry's back. And she's holding on to bars in the ceiling and walking on his back, and uh -huh. then she cracks his neck and yep. makes him go unconscious. I remember that. So that was my only reference of what was going to happen was watching like a spy movie. But they didn't walk on our backs. I I, I wasn't in your room, but she walked on my. Oh, back. She walked on your back. She okay. walked on my yeah. back, and she did this interesting thing with um, her knees on my hips. Wow. Yeah, I had I had the, the, I remember feeling knees as part of the massage. But you didn't have... No, she didn't walk on my back. Oh, yeah. I had full-on walking. Hmm, cool. It was very interesting. Like, she, like, waited to take steps until she could sense my breath. Mm -hmm. And um, many of my ribs got put back into place. Yeah, I think maybe they figured <laughs> out what each person needs and then adjust their massage. Uh, yeah, I mean, that makes sense, and that's how it should be. But that was... Um, it was really fascinating, and it was really interesting to um, have another person's full body, like their weight go into their elbows at your shoulders and into their knees at your hips and yeah. really like this whole hip aligning process it was fascinating well and, and for all of you listening i mean depending upon what your experience has been with you know massage your standard massage that you'll get from i think most massage therapists is very um calming and relaxing and you've got all these wonderful scents that they'll share with you asian massages so different yeah. um and uh, it's amazing i love being able to have both experiences because i also spent a lot of time in in china um had lots of massage in uh, you know in shanghai and there i don't want to say it's aggressive but it's just a different approach and uh, i feel I, I prefer it actually i think compared to the ones that just put you to sleep huh i don't know which i prefer i i really really enjoy like the because like it, chiropractic it, it, I was going to say it's, it's, it's <laughs> massage and it's chiropractic like I feel that they have um, I don't know lo tons of experience that are informing what they're doing yeah not that other people don't it's just like they're taking in the thousands of years of experience you know that they've learned in you know in Asia or whatnot yeah but um, yeah it's very very different experience than your standard therapeutic massage I loved it I would totally do the massage aspect again in a heartbeat um yeah but i think that's kind of all i have to say about the massage i mean thinking back to like my chinese massage in china where it was very for me it was very aggressive and there was um very quick you know like hand motion that was startling and on, around my neck and then my neck getting cracked side to side and all that stuff and my feet being pulled over my shoulders and uh, yeah this was much, much more um, relaxed and less intense. So I enjoyed it extra. <laughs> Good times. Anyways, so um, after massage, um, you're kind of free to do what you want. So like Chris was saying, one of the cool things about getting to do a, a awesome like Korean spa day like this is that you do have access to all the spaces. So you can you know go back upstairs, get back in the, the pools if you want. You can go in just like, chill in the recliners or like do yoga um but then there are a bunch of really cool um just different rooms that have different elements added to them so um starting with i think i think my favorite room actually was the salt room what i didn't really get a chance to look at the floor um did it you was, notice it was the himalayan salt just like, like chunks huge chunks it. chunks of it like underneath the um, the mats. Yeah, so like not river rock size, but not pea gravel size. I don't know what you... I what, would call it gravel size. Yeah, gravel or a little bit bigger than gravel of just salt that is all over the floor. Um, 
like it's like thick like like a sand pit um and then they put like blanket like type towels over it so that you can lay and there are um a great number of headrests and um maybe like giant you know rests that for bamboo stick for your and not bamboo sticks for, for chopsticks. chopsticks yeah like big chopstick rests that are for your head to lay on and you just lay there and um it's a heated room so you know it's just like a sauna it has um there's some seasoned wood in there and then cedar like cedar planks in the ceiling and then um two of the walls and then an entire column is just more salt do you know what the benefit of the salt is? Because I know that's also kind of how they age steaks. I don't. Okay. I could Google it, but I don't. I know it's nice to be in a in a hot, relaxing room. Yeah. Check out these results. Oh, and Google's trying to. Yeah, help sorry. Us. As I said, <laughs> I can Google that. Google decided to like open up on my phone. So. Well, why don't you Google that while I move on to the next room? <laughs> so the salt room was really cool. It was really beautiful. Um, I totally broke a rule and I took pictures because it was too cool and I had to. Um, but then moving right along to the next room, uh, the next room was the clay room. So it had um, mm. a whole bunch of terracotta elements to it. Um, and terracotta is very moisture absorbing, right? Um, as well as it was heated and it was so much hotter than the salt room. Um, I, I felt like the clay room was more than what I could handle. I can't. Oh, I can't comment on the. Looks like you've got some I didn't salt have time info. to go um, into it. Um, but in terms of the the salt room, so uh, dry salt therapy or halotherapy is a holistic, drug free, natural therapy using microparticles of salt to promote better breathing, healthier skin, sounder sleep, improve physical fitness and endurance, and overall wellness. Interesting. Yeah. There you have it. Who knew? Well, they did. Cool. Um, and it was just a cool room. But yeah, so the clay room was um, super duper hot. It kind of felt like I was in a kiln. And um, again, had the great um, towels on the floor so you can just lay. Um, it was not my favorite room, though. Um, the next room in the Korean spa suite of therapy rooms was the jewel room. And the jewel room, you know, like we said, that's that was the initial reason that we went there was because we heard there's this room that is just covered in amethysts. And it literally is a room where the walls are amethyst. It is amazing. So think about like going in a rock shop when you are on a vacation and, you know, you're looking for fossils and stuff. And then you see those enormous geodes that have, you know, purple crystals that are just enormous and amazing so that's what this entire room was covered in was it was tile from the floor to about two feet up the wall and then just amethyst and i didn't know what the purpose of that really was until i started to really think about it and again this was another hot room um but i noticed after laying there for a couple minutes that it was so quiet so i think that um the acoustics the amethyst um because they're just these jagged jagged crystals everywhere it just eats up the sound and creates this really remarkable um like sound buffer zone it was it was interesting so yeah i loved it and it was super pretty and i would love to do something like that here at our house but chris is just shaking his head no that's not gonna happen <laughs> but <laughs> um and then the final room that is in the therapeutic area. Um, it was kind of like the perfect end to our spa day and going from hot room to hot room to hot room was um, the ice room. So the ice room, um, it was very different in that it was a heavily air conditioned room. Yeah, super cold. Super cold. Like super chill. Like, um, but you're so hot and you're kind of sweating when you go into it that it feels amazing. And they've got um, polished granite stools for everybody to sit on. You know, rock maintains its coldness or its heat for a long time. So when you go, you sit on these granite stools and it just kind of sucks the heat out of you and brings you back to like a good functioning level. And I loved it. And the walls were covered in rose quartz. So again, being cool with the rocks. Um, and there was a lovely canvas mural of polar bears. 
you know, you could just kind of zone out and think you're in Antarctica or something. It kind of felt a little bit like it, but I'm sure it was probably only like 30 degrees in there versus being like 30 below. But anyways, so yeah, that's how we ended our time at the Korean spa. Um, everything from the really awkward and kind of uncomfortable and um, like, like I said, for me, painful to the super duper relaxing, kind of dreamy, just amazingness that yeah it's the whole gamut yeah we survived the korean spa we did survive would you go back totally what would you go back for i would go back for a massage and i think maybe next time i might try the facial um in addition to the massage because the packages were like you could do a body scrub and a massage or a facial and a massage but i think facials are super relaxing they'll put me to sleep um and uh, so i think i would do that um, and then maybe try some of the rooms that I didn't get to try. Interesting. I yeah. think I would go back to do some of the pool stuff and then definitely get another massage because that was really incredible and I love that technique. And then um, I think I would also come with a little bit of a um, yoga plan and I would want to do, I know it sounds weird, but I would want to do just some very, very simple, basic, like, well, yoga sequences I heard in the one, clay room. Well, I heard one of the guys, to, while you were getting a body scrub, and then I went to the sauna, one of the guys was talking about some class actually that he did there that was some yoga type class. Really? So I didn't ask more about it. Again, everybody was like naked in the sauna, just having casual conversation, <laughs> and I didn't insert myself in that. But <laughs> I was listening, and so there, there is something, um, some type of exercise classes that they do there. Hmm, cool. Mm -hmm. I'd be into that. I love hot yoga. So, but cool. So that's that. Um, you know, I I loved that experience. And next time we go to another Korean spa, I'm sure we'll review it as well. Um, I'll put some information in the show notes about where we went, um, some of our tips for um, making sure that you're well prepared. We did not eat beforehand, which I think was a good idea. Well, yeah, because also in Asian massage, they like to rub your belly. Yeah, and yeah, if you aren't ready for that, all of a sudden you might feel this really aggressive massage along your digestive tract that um, might make you fart. Or depending <laughs> upon what time you go, it can be really uncomfortable. I did this when I was in Shanghai. I had a, like a massage, but it was after having a, like a couple beers. And then I was getting a massage and I had no idea that they're going to rub my belly. And that's super uncomfortable <laughs> after drinking beer. So, you know, go in the morning, um, go on an empty or stomach. Fast. Yeah. yeah. Fasting beforehand is a great way. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll leave some more tips that we think about as we kind of mind meld a little bit more. Um, I hope you enjoyed listening to us chat about this and um yeah leave a comment or um a review on whatever podcast platform you are listening to share your experience at a korean spa feel free to leave a comment on the blog on um to traveldads.com you'll find the episode there leave a comment on the blog with your own experiments or recommendations too um because i don't think this will be our last trip so yeah cool, cool. thanks for hanging out with us and um, we'll talk to you later. All right. See you guys. Bye. Two Travel Dads podcast is written by Rob and Chris Taylor and produced by Rob Taylor in Suquamish, Washington. If you would like to be on Two Travel Dads podcast or sponsor it, please visit us at twotraveldads.com slash work.